Today I'm going to discuss another one of the greatest lies in physics, time dilation of space. This is another one of Einstein's lies and what he imagined as part of his thought experiments is that space was not physical, had no ether, no quantum field. But he imagined that it had physical dimensions and physical clocks anyway, without saying where those physical dimensions and physical clocks came from. Then he imagined that those physical dimensions and physical clocks could change. And with clocks, he called this time dilation or time dilation of space. But if we actually go to thinking about the literary definition, definition of space. It comes down to space being a boundless container that contains all matter. So space is an abstract concept of a non-physical container that contains all physical matter. So based on that definition alone, space is non-physical. Space has no dimensions. Space has no clocks. If space has no clocks, then it can't have time. If no clocks or time, it can have no time dilation. So by Einstein saying that space has no physical substance in it, no ether, no quantum field, it can't have dimensions and clocks. And this is one of the fundamental flaws in the logic of Einstein's thought experiments. And for reasons unknown to me, most physicists don't question it, even though it's blatantly a violation of logic. Now in reality, what happens is space has a quantum field. There's quantum fluctuations everywhere. And these quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. Wavelengths we measure in meters and frequencies we measure in cycles per second. So quantum fluctuations have dimensions and time. So they have physical dimensions and physical clock rates. The thing is, is that the physical dimensions and physical clock rates emerge from the quantum field theory. They don't emerge from space, non-physical space. They emerge from the physical reality of the quantum fluctuations that make up the quantum field. And interactions between the quantum fluctuations determine the wavelength by the quantum van der Waals torque that develops between the quantum fluctuation dipoles. And then you can see that if you have an electric charge move and you have dipoles that with positive and negative charges, the charges rotate. But as one charge rotates, it makes all the other charges around it rotate. But they are all resistance to rotating. There's resistance to rotating a torque because each dipole has to make other dipoles rotate. And it's this torque that regulates how fast space can be polarized and magnetized, which also determines the permittivity and permeability of space, the electric and magnetic constant, which determines the speed of light limit. So the quantum van der Waals torque is a self-regulating mechanism that regulates the dimensions and clock rates of the quantum field. And that's where the true clock rates, the true physical clock rates of the universe come from. And then the quantum field itself has a rest frame. It has a frame of reference where the permittivity and permeability are at their lowest and the speed of light is at its highest as first recognized by Maxwell. So by having this rest frame, we have an area where the dimensions and clock rates are uniform and fixed. 
so we have this geometrically flat rest frame where the clock rates are uniform and fixed. And that's where the universe gets its time and spatial dimensions. And it doesn't change. So because of this, we have a different form of relativity theory. When we consider an object or observer moving through space, that observer doesn't change the dimensions and clock rates in the rest frame. But what happens is the object or moving observer experiences an effective increase in torque. The quantum torque appears larger because they're having to move against the sea of rotating dipoles, or dipoles that don't want to rotate. And so the more you go, the higher the resistance. And the resistance becomes the relativistic mass energy of the object. So, but what happens with time is not only does, um, by moving the object, you increase the resistance, which increases the permittivity and permeability, the electric and magnetic constant, and decreases the speed of light, effectively, it also slows clock rates. So by having an object move relative to the quantum field, it slows the clock rates of the physical clocks that are associated with that object. And that's how we get clock rate slowing. And clock rate slowing is how we have to think about the relativistic effects on time for objects moving relative to the quantum field restroom and relative to each other. So then we have a case where space does not time dilate. Space doesn't even have physical dimensions and clocks to begin with, so it can't have time and it can't have time that dilates or changes. And the quantum field time doesn't dilate either. What happens is moving physical clocks experience a change in clock rate. And that matches what we see with the GPS clocks or, or other clocks where we change the altitude and they operate at a different level or change their velocity and they, and they operate at a different rate. And all we need is a velocity change, and we get the relativistic effects. And it's not space dilating. It's just the physical clocks experiencing a different clock rate. So one of the greatest lies of physics is the time dilation of space. It's not the way we should, thinking, we should be thinking about it, and we need to start over examination of special and general relativity starting with basic quantum field theory and develop an electromagnetic form of relativity theory. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about the Gray Slides in Physics, I have a book the 100 Greatest Lives of Physics, and I also have a book on quantum field theory, The Zero Point Universe, and my most recent book is on particle theory, Goodbye Quarks, The Onion Theory. And if you purchase one of my books, that helps support me. I'm an independent researcher, and I appreciate the additional support. And I also have a Patreon account if you feel like supporting me that way. So thanks for watching.